This time, if you would all greet those around you, and the kids can come up for the kids' message.
Everybody's quiet. It must be my turn, I guess. Hopefully, I can find my spot. I should mark it with a pen so I can find it easy. Hi, kids. What's up? Good morning. Hi. Who's hungry? My kid's hungry. My other kid's hungry. Is anybody else hungry? Are you so hungry? Who would like some food? Some delicious food? Would you? Okay, I've got something special for you. Let's see here. Hang on just a second. I gotta find it. How about some wonderful milk? Does that sound delicious? Are you so hungry for some delicious, nutritious mommy milk? No, okay. Hold on. Hold on, I got something else. Just hold on. No peeking. Okay. Oh gosh, this stinks. This is a much more mature meal. This is salmon. And it's it's pre-chewed for your delicate digestion. Would anybody like a bite? No. It looks appetizing. No? no. Hungry? No. Well, then what do you want to eat? Nothing. <laughs> Apples and chocolate. What else? Watermelon. Delicious. What do you want to eat? Watermelon. Watermelon? Yeah. How about a nice, juicy hamburger? Sushi. Yeah. Sushi. That's the most mature thing I've heard all day. That's classy. Carrots, very nutritious. That's good for your eyes and your skin. What? Carrots and hummus. Whose classy kid is that? Well, hold on a second. What's wrong with this? I can't hear everybody at once. What? I'm going to point at you. It's for babies. The sermon, ladies and gentlemen. We hit it. Okay. So you're saying this is for babies? Yeah. But we all start on this. What's wrong with it now? Why can't we have it now? Because it's for babies. It's in a baby bottle. It's in a baby bottle. Well, what about this? This is fish. That's more mature, right? It's for kids and stuff. It's, nobody wants that kid food, right? All right. Did you know in the same way as you grow up, and eat more mature food, that we are supposed to grow up and be mature in our faith and the way we love God. Did you know that? It's true. And I didn't make this up, actually. It's in the Bible. I kid you not. I'm going to read you something, guys. This is from the book of Hebrews. Are you ready? So Paul is writing some of his buddies and be like, look, guys, here's how it is. You have been believers so long that by now you ought to be teaching other people. But instead, you still need someone to teach you. Wah, wah, wah. You still need someone to teach you the basic things about God. You're like babies who need milk. It's right here in the book. You're like babies that need milk, like an infant who doesn't know how to do what is right. Solid food, like cheeseburgers, hummus and carrots, and pizza, and what was the other thing? Watermelon? And sushi. There it is. Solid food, like all that yummy stuff, is for the mature, for those who have training and skill to recognize the differences between right and wrong. So look, guys, I want to ask you something. It's okay for a baby to have this, right? Actually, it's more than okay. It's really good. This is really good for babies, but is it really good for me? Okay? Let me, let me ask a quick question. I'm not going to get too far off the beaten path here. Who knows how to pray? Raise your hand if you know how to pray. Okay, got a couple people. Do you remember how you learned how to pray? How did you learn how to pray? Can you describe it to me? From your mom and dad. So what did they do to teach you how to pray? Pay attention, kids. What did they do to teach you how to pray? They would pray. And then what would you do? That's this. Okay? Like when, you're, when your parents literally spoon fade it to you and then say, thank you, Jesus. Amen, right? Okay? That's, and that's good. That was a good start for you, right? But do you still want this? No. No, you don't. Right? And, that's, and that's also good. 
So I'm telling you guys, in the same way now that you want pizza and food, we need to love God with pizza and steak and cheeseburgers, right? You can't live your whole life loving God with, with baby's milk the way your mommy and daddy taught you. At some point, you got to do it because you want to, okay? All right, let's pray. God, we are thankful for milk. We're thankful for mommies and daddies that teach us about you and how to love you. But God, we ask that you would start planting a little spark, a little seed inside of these kids, and that you would water that seed and help it grow, that you would blow on that spark and turn it into a big flame of faith, and that they would love you with steak and cheeseburgers, not with milk. And all God's children said, You may be dismissed. Good morning, Washington Church. It's so happy to see you here and those of you that are joining us online. It's a lovely morning this morning. I'm glad we can all be here to worship. Um, if you are new to Washington Church, if you could kindly fill out your welcome card so that we can get to know you, that would be great. If you're not new, if you could love, lovingly wear your name tag. Josh, I don't see a name tag. All right. Find them. They're, they're in the two different entrances of the building. And if you don't have a name tag, you can go over there to the Welcome Center and get one created. As always, you know, it's, it's, it's a part of worship, um, just like any other. We uh, have giving boxes at the two uh, different sides of the building. You can also give um, online at washingtonchurch.org slash give or via the QR code that's in the bulletin. And then we uh, will be hosting, as we have been, our community gatherings and um, they've been amazing. And so tonight there's one at 5.30. It includes dinner fellowshipping and brief teaching before breaking in a small group. So just, you know, life together, to pray together and to, and to talk together. If you uh, have not signed up for food, you can still do that. Uh, as you can hear from Shannon, please do. Um, and you can do that online via the QR code that's in the bulletin as well. And then an another fun thing that we do is the thing called Open Space which is the first Friday of every month. So this Friday coming up, Friday, November 3rd, at Scott Peck's house um, at 6.30. And you can join the, um, us for a time of worship and prayer and just an open space for the Spirit to move. Um, and I've heard good things about how, how God is moving in those, in those encounters. And then another awesome piece of our, of our worship is to pray for each other. And the prayer team will be around the sanctuary as we worship this morning. Please find somebody with a yellow tag like Patrick has on over there. And, and just life with them, you know, hear, hear from God or, or allow God to minister to you um, if you have a need. And we just, uh, let's stand and worship together. Hello, hello. Okay, all right. So I wanted to introduce a song that I hope is catchy enough to where you will be able to sing along, at least on the chorus, if you've never heard it at all. It's just really, I've been speaking a lot to me lately, so I hope it blesses you as well, but it's just about how we can give up everything to God because he's already won the battles, right? So it goes like this. <clears throat> when I will fight, I'll fight on my knees With my hands lifted high, oh God Battle belongs to you, and every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night, oh God, the battle belongs to you. Let's do that again. When I don't fight, I'll fight on my knees, with my hands lifted high, oh God, the battle belongs to you, and every fear sing through the night oh god that'll be belongs to you all right so hope you got it hope you heard it and hope it really blesses you like it's been blessing me
When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is the mountain, you see a mountain move. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. So when I don't fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands. Did I? Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And if you are for me, can be against me for oh, Jesus there's nothing impossible with you when all I see in the ashes you see Battle belongs to you, and every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. No mighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of Shine in the shadows, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. An almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. belongs to you and every fear I lay at your feet I'll sing through the night oh God the battle belongs to you so when I'll fight I'll fight on my knees with my hands empty high oh God the battle belongs to you and every fear I your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Amen. Thank you, Lord.
Your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me. And on and on.
Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silenced the boast of sin and pain. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. And you have no rival, you have no powerful than any of the nonsense that we do, that we think, that we act out on. Lord, we thank you that you're greater than our sin, that you've overcome all of that. We don't have to walk in that anymore. We can walk in your freedom and in your love. Thank you, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Uh, my name is Jacintha Murphy, and I have the privilege of introducing our speaker this morning. Um, for those of you who might be newer to Washington, um, I've been want to share that I've been privileged to walk with a small and powerful group um, who've been exploring the spiritual gift of teaching together. And we've spent the last year together digging into scripture, um, trying to understand it and learn how to communicate it, um, and what it means to walk with God and, and trust Him in bringing the word to the body. And so 
Um, this, as this year's wrapping up, I'm so proud to announce um, our speaker this morning, um, Anna Ohashi, is going to be bringing the word to us. Um, I just feel so privileged to get to bring her up. Um, I feel like if you were like me at her age, we were thinking about our driver's license and our ACTs and our friends. And so I just, I love what the Lord is doing in her and her faithfulness to step into this this morning. So um, let's welcome Anna. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Raise your hands if you know the saying, life's a journey. Yeah. I took this saying to mean that life looks different at different points in time because you're at different places in your journey. One time, I asked my mom which age she enjoyed raising more, us when we were three months old or when we were a little older, like toddlers running around the house. She told me that there were good things in both stages, but that they each had difficult parts. But to her, they were different, and neither one was better than the other. This wasn't the answer I thought I was going to get, but it definitely relates to our spiritual journeys. In 1 John 2, 12 through 14, John uses physical growth as a metaphor to paint a picture of three different stages in the spiritual journey. Um, if you go to the next slide, thank you. Um, the first stage is the children's stage. The second stage is young men's, and the third and final stage is the father stage. It is important to note that John is not leaving women out. We know this because he desires the whole church to grow in our spiritual journeys. This morning, I'd like to engage you in a conversation between yourselves and God. As we discuss each of the three stages, I will ask questions and give you a moment to think about your answers. Keeping in mind that each stage is good, I'd like everyone to keep two questions in mind. Where do you see yourself on the spiritual journey, as John illustrates it, and are you happy and content there? All right, let's begin. Could you guys all open your Bibles to 1 John 2, 12 through 14? John says, I'm writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, children. Oh, next slide. It was too long to fit on one slide. <laughs> I write to you, children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong. The word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the evil one. Okay. It's one very important thing to note is that John uses two separate words for children in Greek. So even though they both translate to children, they mean different things. In verse 12, John says, I am writing to you, little children because your sins have been forgiven for his name's sake. Here the word that John uses is technia. Um, and throughout the Bible, John is the only, word, only person who uses this word, and he uses it to address his audience, the people he's writing to. So this is not part of the metaphor that John uses to talk about spiritual growth. This is referring to everyone, all of the believers, because no matter what point in the spiritual journey we are at, we, our sins have been forgiven. Here we are reminded of the truth of God's forgiveness through Jesus. Pastor Jimmy did a message on forgiveness earlier this month, and I would encourage you to go back and listen to it, since forgiveness is a huge pillar in our faith. So the first pair of questions that we will reflect on is this. Do you live your life in the truth of God's forgiveness? Is there anyone you need to extend that forgiveness to? I'd like to take a moment together to reflect on this.
Okay, if I could draw you back in. Remember how there are two different Greek words for children in this passage? In verse 14, he uses a different Greek word, paideia. Here is where we start talking about the spiritual journey and using metaphors. So the verse is, I write to you, dear, dear children, because you know the Father. John says he's writing to the children because we know the Father, and that means we know his heart and his abounding love for us. The theme of God wanting us to know his heart is consistent throughout the entire Bible. 500 years before 1 John was written, God used Jeremiah to share this desire with Israel. Jeremiah 31.33 says, This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. This theme of writing God's law, or his word, in our hearts and minds is seen again in Hebrews chapter 8 and 10, which, refer- which references Jeremiah 31. And it is the same today. God still wants to be in a relationship with us, to the point where God intentionally moves to be where we are. Like he did with the Israelites, God writes his words in our hearts and in our minds. You can't get much closer than that. So let's take a moment of silence and ask ourselves this. Um, Are you aware of the Father's heart in your daily life? What truth is God writing in your heart right now? Okay, if we could move on to the next stage in the spiritual journey. So in real life, children grow up and become young men. Same is true in the spiritual walk. So young men, the next stage is mentioned twice. Once in verse 13, then in 14. First it says that we have overcome evil, the evil one. Then it elaborates and says, that because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. So these three things are intertwined. We are strong and we will continue to be strong because the word of God abides inside of us. Therefore, we have overcome the evil one. So first John builds a triangular foundation around the fact that we already have overcome the evil one. Since we already know that the word of God is written inside our hearts and minds, we know that the word of God is active and lives inside of us. Therefore, we know that we are strong and this strength enables us to overcome the evil one. But if you take one out, what happens to the triangle? It's not a triangle. So in John 15, four through five, Jesus says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, and neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. When I think of the word abide, I think of the word residing. Here, I think God is telling us to move in and live in his word, because he knows that without it, we can't do anything. Our triangle is broken, 
and we can't overcome evil. So I want to ask you this. Are there any obstacles in your life that you're having difficulty overcoming? And have you invited the truth of what God's word says into this space? Let's take a moment to think about this together. Okay, let's move on to the next stage. So fathers is the last of the three stages in the spiritual journey. It symbolizes those who are mature in their faith and have walked with God for a while. John says, I am writing to you because you know him who is from the beginning. In this stage, the knowledge of God is deeper and more intimate because people in this stage have spent more time with God. This knowledge can't happen unless we learn to abide in God and in him and us, like Jesus says in John 15. But Jesus says something else in that chapter. John 15, 15 says, No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, because uh, for all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. When we learn to abide and remain in Jesus and his word, we become his friends and he tells us things from the Father. Notice how First John says, you know him who is from the beginning. At this stage in the spiritual journey, we don't just know God in the present. We know who he was way back in the beginning of time because we know his character. We also know what he's up to moving forward because he tells us. But this intimate relationship with the Father doesn't happen overnight, and it's not supposed to. Learning to abide in God and his word is something that we learn in all of the stages in our spiritual journey. So let's take a moment to, together to really think about this next question. How are you experiencing intimacy with God through abiding in his word? Okay, if I could draw you back in. Like the people John was writing to, we are all in different places in our spiritual walks. And all of these places are good. Some of us are at a place where we just need to sit in the truth of our forgiveness. Some of us need to recognize the love of the Father and his heart for us. 
Some of us are engaged in spiritual battles, and we need to rest in the truth that we are already overcomers. But all of us need to learn to remain in God and his word. As I was reflecting on the different stages of, stages of the spiritual journey, I could see myself somewhere in between child and young man. I find myself needing to sit and remember God's heart and forgiveness as I struggle to learn how to consistently remain in God in my daily life. So now I want to ask you the same question. Where are you at? Are you at a child stage where your relationship with God is need-based or do you experience him every day? Are you at a young man's stage where you are fighting battle against, against evil and struggling to overcome? Or are you at the father's stage and able to remain in the word and live through it every day? And finally, are you happy where you're at? Let's think about it together. Okay, I want to leave you with one last note. This is one of my favorite parts of this message. Remember how I said that John used two Greek words for children? Faith, can you go to the next slide? Well, there's a pattern in his writing. When he mentions children for the, for the first time, he, he's talking about everyone. This, he's addressing his audience. And then he goes into the stages of the spiritual journey. Fathers young men, next slide, then children. But then he repeats himself and says, addresses the fathers and the young men again. A commentator I listened to said that this was because we aren't meant to stay at the children's stage. That's why children's only mentioned one time. So this week, let's all strive towards abiding in God and pursuing the next steps in our spiritual journey. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much that we can gather here this morning. Lord, I just pray for each and every one of the people here, Lord. Lord, we're all in different stages in our spiritual journey. And Lord, you delight in every single stage, in all of the joys and all of the difficulties, Lord. But you want us to grow. You want us to grow and become more intimate with you, Lord. You want to move into our hearts and our minds, Lord. And you want each of us to experience you in an intimate and in every day. So, Lord, I just pray that your spirit may come upon us, Lord. That you may just give us the desire to move forward in our spiritual journeys, Lord. That you may meet us where we're at this week. And that we may learn to remain in you and abide in your word. Lord, I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let's stand and worship together with one last song. Great. 
bravest of all valleys Come the pastures we call graves A mighty river flowing upwards From a deep but empty grave I will praise you on the mountain I will praise you in the mountains in my way. You're the summit where my feet are. So I'll praise you in the valleys all the same. No less God within the shadows. No less faithful when the night leads me astray. You're the heaven where my heart is. And the highlands and the heartache all the same. Whoa, 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 Let's say the benediction together. We are a community of disciples of Jesus Christ, embodying the power and the giftings of the Holy Spirit, cultivating space for healing, and living in and expanding God's kingdom on earth. Go in peace. <laughs>